He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, good Sunday morning to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Glad to be with you on this Sunday. Glad to be going through God's Word with you, and always glad to be going through it with my co-host, Jake Porter. Jake is the uh, youth pastor at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to be with you. Yep, always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're in our Red Letter Dilemma series. Been talking about this. In fact, it's been several weeks now we've been in this. We're talking about those red words in the Gospels, um, also in the Book of Acts. Um, a lot of people talk about those red words and say, oh, well, that's all I'm going to focus on. We've been telling people don't don't do that. You know, obviously focus on those red ones, but not just those red ones. If you do that, you'll never get the context. If you don't have context, you'll have pretext. We want people to know the Bible from Genesis chapter one all the way through the book of Revelation. We want people to know God's word. And Jesus quoted the Old Testament. He gave validity to the other New Testament writers. If we don't expand beyond those red letters, we're never going to fully understand Christianity. We've been talking about a lot of different topics, but today what we want to do is talk about the importance of spending time with Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Very important. Yeah. You know, the importance of spending time with Christ. You know, we always talk about how, you know, our our faith is more relationship than religion. And, right. uh, you know, well, that comes with quality time, just right. like any other relationship that you have right. in your life. Right. You know, you, you preach to the youth, I preach to the adults, but we're preaching the same points. Yep. We want our audience to know that, that we do that very deliberately because what we want to do is get the kids and get their parents to have good conversation after church on Sunday morning. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom and dad would say, hey, what'd you learn at church? And my, my response was pretty much what every teenager's response is. I don't know. As was mine. Yeah. But you know what? We don't allow that at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Um, we want to make sure that the the same points I'm preaching, you're preaching. Um, and we, we did that. We talked about spending time with Jesus. We're going to share a quick clip from that message. And as soon as we listen to that, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. So take a listen. Consider the, the fact that every relationship that God has given us here on earth is a relationship that we would better understand him. So if you're here today, you are a parent, we know him as the father. We are his kids. And so you know as a parent the love you have for your child, how you want the best for them, how if they need to be disciplined, you discipline them, but not because you're angry, but because you love them and want them you know, to be in right standing and doing what's good for them. Um, Friendships, you know, we, we have friendships and God is a friend to us and, and he's given us friendships to understand that. He's given us, you know, a government relationship so that way we understand we are in his kingdom, he is king, we are his subjects. All these things are given to us to understand him better. The, the closest one, the closest relationship that he's given us to understand him is that of the marriage relationship where we understand there is a husband who is the head of the home and a wife who lovingly submits to her husband. And in that, we see a picture of Christ, where Christ is the groom, we are his bride. And everybody understands any of these relationships, the way those relationships are successful is if we spend time with one another. You're never going to be successful in marriage if you never talk to one another if you never spend time with one another. Um, it just doesn't happen. Or if you limit the amount of time, you say, you know, I'm going to wake up this morning and I'm going to have breakfast with you and I'll talk to you and I'll listen to you. But after we're done, that's it. I'm gone. I got other things I got to do. And so that's, you better love that time with me because after that, you don't get any more today. Wouldn't that be weird? I mean, that, that would not be a successful relationship by any measurement. So think about Christ uh, in, in the Gospel of John, Jesus actually talks to us about abiding in him. John chapter 15, he says, abide in me. That term abide, when you look in the original language, it means to continue to be present, to continue to be there with. Now, Jesus never leaves us. He never forsakes us. 
He's always there. His Spirit is in us. So if anybody could not be present in the relationship, who is it? Us, right? And it'd be like living with somebody and, and yeah, you're there and you're living in the same home, but you never talk to the person. That, again, would be very strange and would not be a sign of a healthy relationship. So Jesus is always there and it's up to us to be present with him to go to him, to talk to him. And that is what it means to abide. He says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So we want to live a life that is producing good fruit, that's, that's got good results, right? If we don't abide in him, it just can't happen. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me... You can do nothing, okay? We can try on our own to, to produce the kind of fruit that we want, but the fact is, apart from Christ, we really can't do it. So the idea then is, as we abide in Christ, we start to see those fruits taking place. And the beautiful thing about fruit is you don't have to try to manufacture fruit. Think about that. I mean, you've ever seen a grapevine struggling to produce grapes, no, right? I mean, it, it just happens naturally over the course of time. As, as the sun comes up and the water hits the ground and, and the, you know, it just, it just happens. And that's the same thing. As, as you and I abide in Christ, we don't have to struggle to try to make these good things happen. It just is naturally going to happen because we're around Christ. We're abiding in Him. I can tell you this, for me, as a married man, as a father, as a, you know, as a pastor, and all the, the roles God has me in, I know when I'm abiding in Christ. I've been doing it long enough to know. Uh, I can tell you, of all the relationships I have, my marriage is the one where I, it's so clear for me. If, if I'm spending enough time with Jesus, it's my marriage where it shows. Because my marriage is like my spiritual thermometer. Because I am blessed to have such a good marriage, and, and we've been faithful, we've 25 years together, and, and, uh, and we've been married 25 years. And at my age, that's pretty awesome. So um, we're, we're happily married, and I can tell you this, that when there is a struggle in our marriage... It is a sure sign to me that I'm not spending enough time with Jesus. Now, she might not be spending enough time either, but I always know that, that when there's a struggle in the marriage, that's my, my, my temperature gauge. I know something's going on. I'm not spending enough time with Jesus. And I use that, and the Lord uses that in my life, to help show me that, I'm, that I need to get back on track. I don't know what that is for you, but if you're here today or you're watching online and you are filled with God's Spirit, I hope that you have that thermometer, that you have that spiritual temperature gauge. Okay, am I spending enough time with Jesus? Whatever it is the Lord uses in your life to show you that you need to get back to spending more time with Him, it's important for us to find out what that is. But spending time with Him is of the utmost importance. And we're going to see that in the scriptures today in Matthew chapter 12. Yeah, Matthew chapter 12, um, talking about how to really know, are we spending the time with Jesus that we need to spend? And if, like, like I said, if you don't spend it, you're, what kind of relationship is that? Yeah. So um, for our listeners today, I want them to know uh, another way you can know if you're spending time with Jesus is whether or not you're aware of the signs of the times. You know, you, you get in a car, you start to drive. Um, I'm sure this has happened to you. It's happened to me before where I'm in a car, we're driving, either I'm driving or somebody else is driving, and, and time just slips away. And then all of a sudden I realize, oh, wait, there's this sign coming up. That's my exit. Oh, I missed the exit. You know, it's happened to me. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're not paying attention. You're yeah. not really doing what you should be. You should be paying attention while you're driving, you know. Um, I wasn't paying attention. It just it came upon me real fast, and next thing you know, it was man, I missed it. If you are following after Jesus, there are signs that we're supposed to be paying attention to. There are mm -hmm. things that that we should be aware of. And when you're spending time with Him, you're going to realize, hey, these things are happening all around me. I'm aware of it because I'm in His Word. I'm spending time with Him. I know what He told me to look for, and I'm seeing it now. And 
there are people who see these signs all around them and they, they're not even aware of God's presence. And that was true many times. We see this over and over again through the scriptures. It was very true in the life of the Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, um, there was this man who was brought to Jesus, and the scriptures tell us that he was demon-possessed. This man was blind and mute, and Jesus healed this man. You know, you think about this. This is a man who's blind and mute. He can't see. He can't talk. He's demon-possessed. So Jesus gets rid of the demon. The guy can see. He can talk all of a sudden. And all the multitudes were amazed. So they were, whoa, this is awesome. This guy, this is incredible, which really, that should be the response. This is incredible. This is I'm so happy for this man that was demon-possessed and is no longer possessed. I'm so I'm happy for him. He couldn't see. Now he can see. They're rejoicing. They're amazed. And they ask a very certain question that, that they should be asking. Could this be the son of David? We know this is, you know, talking about the Davidic promise, the mm-hmm. Davidic covenant, that the Messiah would come through the line of David. Mm-hmm. Could this be him? Look what he just did. This is incredible. You know, this is a sign. We should be looking for, you know, this is something we were told, and this was something that they were told to look for, that he would heal people like this. So could this be him? Let's pay attention. Let's draw close to him. But that's not what the Pharisees did. Mm-hmm. In verse 24, it says that when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Mm-hmm. I mean, unbelievable. Um, they just, they're not, they're not seeing the signs that these are the guys that, I mean, they're they're the ones that teach the signs. Yeah. Yeah. They're the ones that should have known. Yeah. Should know very clearly. They should know and have told everybody, Hey, come here and look at this. This is the guy we've been waiting for him. Yeah. Kind of makes me think of like, okay, you know, beyond driving down the road, if you're just walking through life and, and there's things that happen all around us, there's news that comes out, there's wars that happen. There's, you know, just things going on in the world all around us. And for the, for some people, you can look at what's going on around and say, oh, God's word says something about that. I've heard about that God's word. That's in God's word. That's in God's word. I've heard God's word say something about that. And then there's other people that are just like, oh, I, I have no idea. Like, oh, sure. Yeah. I'll, I just kind of go along with whatever's going on. And it's like there's there's signs, there's things all over the place happening around us, just like they were here. Right. And there's some people that are saying, okay, could this be what God's word's talking about? And then there's other people that are going to be like, oh, God's word doesn't say anything about that. Right. And, and there's this contrast where we should be caught on the side of like, okay, man, God's word says something about that. Right. But in order to do that, that means you spend some time with Christ. Right. Like I said, yeah, it was the, it was the Pharisees that should have seen that. Yeah. Right. And yet it was the Pharisees who were rejecting it. And here we are today, 2022, and we see the same thing happening where there are spiritual leaders, there are pastors who should be seeing these things. They should be spending time in God's word and knowing what God says and then looking at everything going on around us and going, hey, everybody, pay attention. Mm-hmm. This could be this could be that time. You, know, you look at all the signs God told us about that there would be, like you said, wars, rumors of wars. There would be ethnic groups fighting with ethnic groups, you know, nation versus nation, people group versus people group, um, never before in our lifetime have we seen on a world scale where you'll have major corporations and governments get funding organizations like Black Lives Matter, you know, to pit people against each other, to have massive ethnic groups fighting with ethnic groups. Yeah. But Jesus told us, hey, watch for this. Yep. Shouldn't the spiritual leaders be saying, hey, Wait a minute. I've been spending time with Jesus. I've been spending time in his word. I should sound an alarm. Let people know this is happening. Um, we're, we're told that there's going to be famines. Well, look at all the, the things that are being told to us right now about food shortages that are likely to come by this summer. Yep. You know, right. That's right around the corner from us. Oh, what is it? A week from summer? So getting there, you know, um, so we're told to look for famines, look for food shortages. Uh, we're told to look for worldwide sicknesses. We know we, we went through one for a couple of years. Yep. Then they've got, there we go. they got a whole new one coming around. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then earthquakes in various places. We know that Christians are going to be hated for his name's sake. He said, they hate me. They're going to hate you. Yep. Lo and behold, Christians are the bad people right now. Right. You know, nobody likes Christians. Um, 
Many people are going to turn away from the faith. We're told that people are going to betray one another, uh, that people are going to hate one another, that false prophets are going to rise up and deceive a whole bunch of people. I mean, all of these things are happening all around us. We're told that lawlessness is going to abound, that the love of many would grow cold. We've got smash and grabs. We've got, you know, wicked, wicked um, district attorneys like out in Los Angeles, George Gascon, just letting anything go. Lawlessness. Yeah. All of these things were foretold that the love of many would grow cold. So this is, this is you know everything I just said is just a result of spending time in God's Word, and then knowing what's happening all around and going, okay, well because I've spent time with Jesus, spent time in His Word, I know I know the signs. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen. The the more people spend time with Him, the more they're going to be very well aware of what's going on. You know. Um, Another thing that, that people are going to know, like if I'm spending time with Jesus, I am going to be very, very victorious when it comes to spiritual warfare. Yeah. Yeah, when you grow in your relationship with Christ, you grow in something called spiritual maturity. When you grow in something called spiritual maturity, you're able to fight off these spiritual battles a lot better. When you when you arm yourself with God's word and and you you really equip yourself with the truth found in God's word, then then you're gonna you're gonna find victory over some of these things that are that are otherwise causing a big issue in your life. Right. Well, you you look at what Jesus says. I mean, here's here they are accusing him of casting out demons mm-hmm. by the power of the king of the demons himself, Satan. They're, they're accusing him of being a tool of Satan. you know. And, and he responds to them in verse 25, and he says, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. I think we need to remember that right now in America because we're a very divided nation. Yeah, A, a house divided against itself, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. It'll be brought to desolation. Now, it says in verse 26, If Satan cast out Satan... He is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if a, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Jesus is saying, "Listen, I am God." Yeah, yeah, and he and he's casting out spirits or demons by the Spirit of God. He's giving credit to the Holy Spirit in this case, but he's he's identifying himself as the Son of God, um, making himself equal with God, and it is by his word that this demon is cast out. And that is something that we need to remember as children of God is we have that same authority because we have the spirit of God. He gives, Jesus gave credit to the spirit of God. We have the spirit of God. Yeah. By his word, they were cast out. By his word, we can cast out. And a lot of times I think people are very slow to realize the spiritual battle that they're in. Because their eyes are so fixed on their problem, they're so fixed on their their circumstance that they haven't paused for a moment and said, okay, could this be spiritual? Do I need to address this on a spiritual level or not? Yeah. And there's a lot of distractions from that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of distraction from just the the spiritual battles all around us. You know, there's yeah. a spiritual realm with battles happening all over the place and we're being attacked from all 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 the time from the enemy. And, you know, some people don't realize that. And like you said, there's something that happens and they they fail to come to the conclusion that, okay, this is actually a spiritual battle. I'm in a very spiritual battle right now that I need to overcome to get through this. Right. And I think that, that kind of gets forgot sometimes. Right. You know, and, and I think also people forget how great that power is that yeah. is in them. Mm-hmm. You know, 1 John 4, 4 says, you are of God little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And I think people need a pause when they, when they hear this scripture, because you you hear these scriptures and maybe, you know, and for, for us, we're around the Christian world all the time. We hear Christianese all the time and, yo, Hey brother, greater is, is he who's in you who's, and he who's in the world. And they just throw it around. 
as though this is just, you know, just some cliche statement. But when you pause for a moment and go, okay, what the word of God tells me is that what is in me as a believer is greater than what is in the world. The the person of God who has been placed in me is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God, the God who is everywhere. You cannot escape him. You can't hide from God. Adam and Eve tried in the garden. They tried to hide. They, you can't hide. You, you can't like, oh, I'm going to just go into my house and shut the door or nobody's going to know what I'm doing. No, the Holy Spirit is there. You cannot escape God. He is everywhere, omnipresent. He is omniscient. He knows everything. There's nothing you can do that surprises him. There's nothing you can teach him. He already knows it all. His wisdom is far beyond ours. As the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways. He is so much more intelligent than we are. Yeah, He's the omniscient God. And he's the omnipotent God. He is the all-powerful God. There is nothing he can't do. There's no problem that is too big for him. There is no task that is too difficult. This is a God who has all power, all authority. Omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God. And that God that breathes out stars, that God who holds the entire universe together, that God has been placed in you He's been placed in me. If you're listening today, he's been, and you're a believer in Jesus Christ and have submitted yourself to his, his authority and received the grace, I'm telling you, if, if that's you, you have all of that power in you. And now what do we do with it? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's just life's been so tough. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know how I'm ever going to get through this. I don't know how I'm ever going to tackle this situation. Oh, it's just so horrible. What do you mean? You've got the power of the living God in you. Use it. Yeah. That's a tremendous blessing, too. Yes. We have access to that. Right. We have the ability to fight off anything that comes our way. Right. You know, talking to students, talking to youth, it's like, oh, well, you know, I can't, like, not do it. Like, oh, you know, I'm there. I'll play video games or something. They're, like, so addicted to playing video games. I'm like, dude, you've got to put God first. Right. And, like, I just, I, I can't. I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, I'm like can. the spirit yeah. of God can overcome any right. of these things that are right. a problem in your life. Right. Yeah. And you know, the thing is like, well, that person's too, too, you know, I get this all the time. Like, well, you know, Pastor Tim, you're going to talk to those people like, oh my gosh, they're, they're this person or that, that I don't care who they are. Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate and he's like, why don't you say something? Don't you know I have the power? I have the authority to have you killed right now. And Jesus is like, you think you have power and authority? The only power, the only authority you have has been given to you by my Father in heaven. You have nothing unless I give it to you. Yeah. Do you think that that statement was exclusive to Jesus? No. We are his kids. We have his spirit in us. And for some reason, we tuck our tail and run. Listen, we got to we gotta spend time with him. When we spend time with him, we start to realize we don't have nothing to fear. We have the spirit of the living God in us. There is... There is something God wants to accomplish in us and through us, and we can't let any circumstance or any person stop us from carrying that out in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you when you start to look at life from that perspective, things change a little bit. When you start to look at, you know, things that you're struggling with in life, it changes. When you look at sin, okay, your your perspective to that changes. You can have victory over these things. You can have true victory over these right. things in life. And and that's something very, very important. If and but that only comes when you spend that quality time with Christ. Right. It only comes one way. Right. Well, we are running out of time here today, Pastor Jake, but I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. And I just want to tell those of you who are listening right now. If you're struggling right now, if you're um, if you're, you're dealing with anything right now that you just feel is too big for you, remember that you, if you're a believer, you've got the spirit of the living God in you. You need to challenge whatever it is with that spirit. Just tackle it head on. If you don't have the spirit of God in you, you need to you need to find out more about how you can become a believer and have the spirit of God in you. Get with us at Our Watch. Just go to info at rwatch.com. We would love to, to talk to you. We'd love to pray with you, a prayer of receiving the Spirit of God into your life. We want you to be victorious. That's all the time we have right now. We will see you next time on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. God bless you. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you're encouraged to engage the culture around you. 
We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.